Hi Aries, welcome to your reading for September 2024. Um, this is going to be for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising. Uh, those intuitively guided, thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, you could certainly have placements in Aries. You know, there's seven planets in retrograde right now. I don't know what's making me say this right now, but... Um, I know a lot of people have been going through like it's been a difficult week for a lot of people and I just have a plan have a feeling that um, these planets in retrograde um, are part of it um, but anyways uh, you could certainly be in love with a, an Aries platonically romantically and um, as many of you know I do read through my spirit guide so um, Know that, know that your guides know that you're here and they'll definitely deliver messages for you too. Um, we are going to do things a little different this month, which many of you already know this. Um, normally when I do the monthly readings, I start with the birthday month and then just go forward. But this month, something told me to do the opposite sign. So your opposite sign. So for you, that's Libra which I already did Libra's reading. Now I'm going to do your reading. Um, we're going to use the exact same decks um, for the opposite, you know, for each opposite signs. And we're, I'm using different decks for different signs, but for your opposite, definitely using uh, the same decks. I am looking for synchronicities. Um, and I do think it's a good idea to know your opposite sign because I feel like, you know, like I'm a Virgo and Virgo can have a hard time, like, you know, bringing their emotions out. And my opposite is a Pisces who, you know, has no problem bringing out terms of endearment and what have you. So that that's definitely something um, I can learn from. And, you know, so that's why I feel like, you know, knowing your opposite sign um and understanding that it can definitely help bring, let's just say, more balance into your life. Um, so, so this is what we're doing for September. I also decided to bring in. Oof. Well, look at this. We have the wheel and the star. How about that? Hopes and dreams, and then destiny. So, you know, I'm not going to take them right now, but I I do have to notice that they didn't come up with the rest of the deck. Destiny, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. Um, so that wheel might be turning for you. So anyways, we're bringing back the major arcanas. And I'm using these really as a bullet point for your reading. You know, I'm taking, well, I'm hoping for three. But whatever comes out, we're going to take them, of course. Um, and then we'll see. Sometimes they tell their own little message. But they'll definitely relate back to the reading. Um I, so far, I, I'm so happy I brought them in for September because they seem just right on point. So we'll use those. But let's go ahead and start with Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. Um, I'm going to use the Tredivia Tarot to clarify or go deeper, like I like to say. That's why the readings are long. Yeah, I know not everybody appreciates that, and that's okay. But I do it for the ones who do appreciate it. Um, and it's just the way I read. Like, I can't change that part of me. And I don't even want to change that part of me. Um, we're going to use the good tarot for your main spread. Um, that's what I use for Libra. But let's go ahead and open this reading up. And let's start with Mother Mary. I've been using Mother Mary at the end of the readings. But... Again, it feels like things want to be different for September. So let's just let it be. All right. And everything's always pre-shuffled before you come here. I just like to give it a shuffle or two before or when you're here. Um, and by the way, I just also want to say, because, you know, I get comments often about, um, you know, people finding readings that, you know, they may think that they were like their current readings, but they could be like, I just had a comment yesterday where someone watched a video that was six years old, but everything resonated with her. 
at this present moment. And I feel like that's exactly how these readings are meant to be. Like these readings will find you in divine timing when you need them or you'll find them. You know, I just feel like your spirit guides, um, I think I already cut them. We'll just put them before you. So let's begin. Okay, we have one flipped over. We're going to take that. And we're going to take this one. One of my favorite cards from Mother Mary, Watch to Over. I feel like it's so important that we know this, um, that we truly are being watched over. You know, and, and the way I look at it is, uh, you know, and I feel like it's through my spirit guides that I know this. Um, as souls, you know, before we came into this lifetime, we were already assigned, you know, certain angels, certain archangels, um, and then a spiritual team that's really our guidance in, you know, for this physical plane, for our time on this earth, you know, and, and remembering that we are spiritual beings having human experiences. That gives you a sense of power, but also just knowing that, you um, you have this beautiful team who are all, who's always watching over you and sending you signs. But let's read what it says. I allow myself to feel safe and enjoy my life, knowing that heaven is watching over me and my loved ones. Beautiful. And by the way, um, I feel like our spiritual team only gets bigger as, you know, certain loved ones cross over. I feel like they definitely become part of that team. And we have be strong, be strong, Aries. I pull myself up and do what needs to be done. Watched over and be strong. Okay, so we're going to put them right there. I'm going to bring the lid down and let's go ahead and give the Major Arcanas. I don't even know the name of this deck, to be honest with you. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm the one who split up the deck and just used the Major Arcanas. And I know it was like years and years and years and years ago. Um, and like, I don't remember why I did it, but I love, like, I, I don't know why I don't do this more often. Um, maybe a couple times a year I bring them in, but I just love the messages that they bring. So let's go ahead and begin. Or let's, or let me put it a different way. Let's, be, let's begin the tarot portion. We have the Hierophant, number five. You know, to me, five speaks of change. So the Hierophant is probably asking you a question, asking you to ask yourself a question. You know, it's about your belief system, your morals. You know, are you living life according to your standards, to what you believe in? Or have you taken on other people's ideas or even an, even limited viewpoints about you? You know, this is about coming back to yourself, I feel. Um, you know, I don't feel like it's about religion. I feel like it's about your spirituality. It is a card of Taurus, um, but I'm not really reading them as people. I'm reading them as energy. Feels like, um, feels like a blessing. Feels like someone's being blessed. Wow. Temperance. Hello. Divine timing. Look what she's doing. She's she's mixing the loving waters of the soulmates. You know, I feel like temperance is the one who really makes sure that, like, you know, I have a feeling that we're going to be talking about soulmates. Um, she's really the one who, let's just say, makes sure that both soulmates are are on the same vibration. Um, you know, because if one's in a lower vibration and one's in a higher vibration, then, you know, chances are 
it won't work in the way that it could. It has the potential to. This is about divine timing. But Temperance's first message is about patience. Yeah, I do feel like the Hierophant is like, is blessing these soulmates. Definitely feels like a blessing over. Interesting. All right. I'm going to take more than that, though. So, divine timing. You know, a five right before that. Potentially some type of change. And I feel like that change really right now feels like it's within yourself. You know, am, am I living the best life I could be living, you know? Or am I lowering my vibration to match someone else's? I know a lot of you have done, like, a lot of spiritual work on yourselves, you know? And sometimes people of lower vibration can like be eclipsed out of our lives and it is a good thing though we may not understand it at that time all right we have the hermit the hermit so the hermit i feel like the hermit's really a master teacher but i feel like the hermit is becomes a master teacher through some very dark experiences, you know, like going through the dark night of the soul. Um, the hermit's really seeking spiritual answers on this earthly plane. And it's usually in a period of time when it just feels like the energy is dark, right? Like I'm surrounded by darkness. And I feel like one of the things the hermit learns is you know, if I'm seeking the light, what the hermit realizes is I am the light. I am my own savior. Now, I feel like working hand in hand with divine, like when I realize that I can save myself, and then I also trust in divine, well, that's a powerful combination. This person, you know, they do go through the dark night of the soul, but I often feel like they go through the dark night of the soul because they are learning. You know, first of all, I feel like their soul wants to learn some, you know, what I feel like will eventually be valuable lessons. And I feel like the hermit ultimately is the one who shines their beacon of light to others. So it's like as I learn, right, as I evolve, then, then I just naturally want to help others. So I shine my beacon of light out. It's like the natural healer. But maybe I had to realize that it's like, doctor, heal thyself. It is a nine. So it is about reflection. But, you know, to me, nines, yes, reflection, but final reflection. I feel like this is saying a lot of you have really grown spiritually like leaps and bounds. And... I feel like some of you are coming out like the other side of the dark night of the soul. Again, the dark night of the soul, it just to me, just means like some very difficult lessons, experiences. Um, like, how did I get here? How do I get out of here? Well, you find that light in this energy. And I kind of love that the hermit is like, is shining that beacon of light outwardly like in like to the rest of us so it feels like a blessing is on its way maybe i needed to be patient maybe i needed to like really find myself again you know find my own light and i feel like temperance is saying and then that will be divine timing that will be the right time for whatever she's bringing together to come together. All right. Let's go ahead and bring in the good Chiro now. I'm going to give it a couple of shuffles. I feel like I'm losing my voice. And it's interesting because um, when I feel that way, I often feel that there's 
there could be some who feel like they have lost their voice. And I mean like their voice in the world, their voice within their own life and the reclaiming of that. All right. Give them a cut. Again, this is the same deck. All these decks are the same decks I used for um, Libra, which again is your opposite. Let's go ahead and begin. Hello, Ace of Swords. Very first card. You know, the Ace of Swords, it's interesting because um, back in the day, excuse me, I used to do um, just quick yes and no questions. Um, and, I, and this is before I even joined YouTube. I used to do it on Facebook. And, my, and the Ace of Swords was my yes card. You know, the Ace of Swords to me speaks about your truth, your voice, your integrity. It can certainly speak about communication. Some of you, you're becoming like, um, you know, like your voice is, uh, I don't know, I feel like, like you're using your spiritual voice to help others. And it could be completely unexpected. Like you could find yourself on a path that you just never expected, but yet it just feels like the right way, the right you know, the right direction. By the way, I do want to say, feel free to ask your spirit guides to give you signs of confirmation during the reading. And that can come from, you know, me saying certain words, numbers, um, whatever it may be. And then just kind of let go and trust. It's a big deck. It's a big deck for my little hands. All right, we have the moon. Um, Heart of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. You know, it's interesting. I went outside last night. Um, it was pretty late. It was like one o'clock in the morning. And um, I just felt like I needed to be outside and get some fresh air. And I looked up in the sky and it looked like a full moon. I'm not sure if it's a full moon, but it looked that way to me. And I thought, oh, well, that's interesting because, again, I feel like, you know, you know, and as the the moon is becoming full, that can feel, at least to me, it can feel somewhat restrictive. And then once the moon becomes full, I feel like, and then it's like the release. So, but anyways... Heart of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. The moon can talk about uncertainties. You know, I can only see as far as the moonlight allows me to see. Um, but it's also very dreamy energy. I didn't even see these cards. We have the Four of Cups. Okay. So the Four of Cups talks about discontentment, boredom in one's life. It doesn't have to mean in all areas of your life, but definitely, you know, it's Cups. That would be something emotional. However, in the Four of Cups, which you can't really see here, but um, you're being offered a cup. And... It's about using your spiritual discernment, whether you accept this cup or not. Sometimes you'll see this image in Tarot where the person is like really focusing on the cups um, that have been knocked over. And they don't see the cup that's being, which I feel like is being handed to you from the hand of God. You know, divine, whatever, how, whatever you want to say. Um, so this is a message to learn how to use your spiritual discernment. You know, especially because it's coming next to the moon. But yet I feel like the Ace of Swords is giving you some comfort in that. We have the King of Pentacles. Um, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. We have Taurus and Virgo on the board. 
And then, wow, we have the marriage card, four of wands, the commitment card, under the ace of swords. Interesting. Interesting. Some of you may be questioning a relationship or the potential of one. Because again, you're being asked to use your own spiritual discernment. And I feel like this is saying you have that wisdom now. It's reminding me of a cheer, a cheer I used to do when I was a um, a cheerleader for basketball. You got the ball now, put it to use. You got the ball now, put it to use. So anyways, this King of Pentacles is right next to the Four of Wands. Coming under that Ace of Cups. It makes me feel good if this is talking about a potential commitment. You know, it could even be someone who is about to announce, like, the way that they feel, you know, their truth about you. And to me, the Four of Wands is the most beautiful love card because this is where two people truly want to make a commitment to each other. Like, there's really no doubt. But. That is why the Four of Cups is even more important, right? Using my spiritual discernment. Again, I feel like there's a blessing heading your way. And, and it almost feels like, like a reward because of the willingness to go deep. The willingness to find that light. And even the willingness to help find that light for others. You know, it's like good karma coming back to you. But let's not forget... I felt with temperance, um, well, I know with temperance, like she's holding both the cups of the soulmate, of the soulmates, excuse me. Okay, let's keep going. Interesting. Um, and I, you know, I do have to say also for those who... Um, maybe have like an easy time expressing their emotions. When I see the King of Pentacles, first of all, I do think loyalty. And I know that's not like every earth sign. That just would be impossible. It really depends on like, you know, their upbringing and their belief system. <clears throat> However, because it's mirroring the Ace of Swords, I'm feeling good about this King. Um, this is also someone who, when they look at life, they look at the big picture down. You know what I mean? Like, they don't dissect it like the queen would. You know, it may it may talk about, like, worries that you have on your mind where this king is looking at it, in a, it like, in a completely different way. Um, but it can also be because Earth is very good at kind of holding back a little, you know, I feel like, and I am, I'm a Virgo, um, and I do read for a lot of earth signs, I mean, I read for a lot of signs, but um, I do know that that's one of the traits, like, you know, it takes a lot to, like, really allow you into their deepest, darkest um, feelings, but I feel like once they do, well, then I feel like, you know, if they're let's just say, if a high vibrational energy, well, then you don't have to worry. Then it moves into commitment. And I do feel like, want, you know, this is a type of king that would want that commitment. But I do feel like loyalty is important. You have the Ace of Swords is kind of backing that up. So it's either you or the other side who may have like a little bit of uncertainty look at this another ace aries ace of wands inspired action inspired action that means the inspiration hits you first and then it asks you to take action in it towards it 
you know, I feel like in the Ace of Wands, it's one of those energies where it presents itself, but then it's up to us whether we're going to reach out and accept that Ace, take that Ace, Ace of Swords and the Ace of Wands. I just have a feeling someone may be communicating with you and um, maybe expressing like true emotions. You know, and I also feel because we have the Ace of Wands under the moon and the moon can again talk about uncertainties, but sometimes we may try to like project ourselves too far out in the future, you know, like saying to this king, well, is this going to go to a full commitment? You know, time will tell because in a way with these aces, it's the potential of building um, you know, building a true relationship, building a true commitment, um, but then not skipping over the beginning of something, right? And that's where a lot of romance lies. Um, and even like the, the butterflies, you know, don't confuse the butterflies with fear. Though I'm not trying to talk you into anything at the same time. The Knight of Wands, the Knight of Wands. So, you know, here it's called the Messenger of Wands. And that may be exactly what it is, like messages coming your way. I feel like that's what the Ace of Swords is. I feel like someone's about to communicate. Um, you know, the Knight, I often feel like a Knight will complete their mission. You know, it feels like they are sent from the queen or the king. But this is something is desirable, passionate. And it is fast moving. And it's interesting how I just said, like, sometimes just slow it down. You know, people will always reveal themselves to you. You just have to give them the time. So if you have any fear about stepping forward, step forward slowly. But then again... The fire down here, right? Starting with the with a true commitment energy, moving into the Ace of Wands, inspired action. You know, it's bringing me right back to Temperance, where again I feel like she's like she's making sure both of those soulmates are probably on the same vibration, and then the passion, and that's what I don't want you to miss. Like, let's just say this is just you know. We're starting at, at the beginning. Don't miss the passion. That's the fun. But it could move faster than even I thought. Interesting. Here is your opposite sign. Justice. Uh, Carta Libra. You know, justice talks about balance. Um, what's fair and just in the world. It is interesting, and it's mirroring the Four of Wands. It could potentially talk about a previous relationship, previous ties that have been cut. And yes, it could be something that's coming back around. But if it is coming back around, I feel like the vibration would have changed. You know, it's interesting. She's holding what I feel like is that Ace of Wands. Hmm. I also feel like justice speaks about karma and that's what I felt up here, like good karma coming your way, but it's because you deserve it. It's because of the willingness to like really go within. Maybe you needed to cut ties to certain energy. You know, what, what is it in your life that let's just say you're discontent with? Do you keep it in your life or can you cut those ties? And sometimes it can be our own thoughts. Well, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. All right. Well, there you go. The tower. Now it's on the bottom of the deck. So to me, that's energy that wants to leave. However, it does speak about something that ended. You know, it can talk about someone who fell from grace. 
And, you know, if this is something that's coming back around, then I would definitely make sure that it is of different, it's a higher vibrational energy. Look at that, Ten of Cups below that. So, that is the house of love, but something happened. Someone probably fell from grace. Did that mean that you literally cut ties to that? Or or maybe that's something you're considering right now. You know, the tower is difficult energy, no doubt. But I do feel like the tower often, down the road, we see how it really was our saving grace. You know, maybe someone promised you the Ten of Cups, but then didn't deliver it. Let's see what's underneath that. The Six of Cups. So someone that you used to know. Excuse me. Hmm. You know, I'm noticing that number 11 also. So, here comes this cup. What am I going to do? I feel like the cup's full of passion. I can't deny that. I feel like it is talking about someone reaching out and communicating. Um, I can't help but think that even if I want to say no, like there feels like there's going to be, you know, like, again, butterflies, something that's going to mm, make you, I just feel like want to go forward. And again, with the hermit here, I feel like you're not the same person that you used to be. So if it's anyone that's coming back around, then, and if it is someone who's fallen from grace, and it's someone that potentially maybe you do want in your life, I would say take it slow. Let them reveal themselves to you. But yet, in a way, I feel like for the majority of you, this is talking about you know, someone that you may have had to cut out of your life. You weren't happy in it anyway. And maybe you thought another cup would never come along, but lo and behold, here it comes. And it just so happens to be filled with passion. All right, let's bring in the Tredivia uh, Tarot and let's go over this. Let's go deeper. Let's see what this blessing is about, which I already have an idea what it's about. Let's see what Temperance wanted us to have patience in. Sometimes it's the healing of previous towers. Again, someone could have promised me the world, but didn't deliver for whatever the reason. And also, when I get watched over by Mother Mary, I feel like I feel like it is to give you some comfort, knowing that anything that's coming into your life that they probably have a hand in. Remember, your guides are always sending you signs. Um, but as you know, being a human, many times we miss those signs, even red flags. You know, maybe there was a red flag back here. I didn't want to see it. I ignored it. And lo and behold, I ended up having to go through the dark night of the soul. You know, like someone could have just like cut you off. Um, that type of energy. And though it's very difficult, you know, then you have be strong. I feel like, again, the day will come when that tower no longer holds any power over you and your life. And you just might be thankful for it. All right. We have the page of swords. Boy, do I feel like someone's going to communicate.
I feel like someone's going to communicate. We have the Five of Cups. Interesting. Five of Cups. Well, let's talk about this for a second. Because first of all, the Five of Cups talks about where one's focus is at. And in the Five of Cups, I'm really focusing on what I have lost. And what I want to be careful about in this energy is, you know, I don't want to keep my attention on what I have lost for too long. Because I need to start thinking about what's yet to be gained, you know, what else lies out there for me. And when this person does make that change, literally what's behind them, can't really see it in this image, is two cups. Soulmate energy. And temperance being, you know, literally like has control over those cups divine timing so five is about a change now for some of you could it be again someone returning well i feel like if that's the case then um again has the energy evolved is it what i really even want because i do feel like for the majority this is talking about new someone new you know, a soulmate energy that you probably haven't met in this lifetime. You could have met them, but maybe you didn't realize, like, the potential yet. You know, I'm going back and forth because I also feel like this could be someone who may say, like, I realize now, you know, I've had that realization. I've done my own reflection and I realize that you really are my soulmate. We have the Queen of Cups coming over the Four of Cups. And then look at this. We have the King of Pentacles coming over the King of Pentacles. Interesting. Interesting. Queen of Cups um, can be a Cancer of Scorpio or Pisces. But really the Queen of Cups is someone who, to me, um, I feel like loves to be in love. Doesn't mean they have to be in love, but they appreciate love. This is someone who um, I feel like can easily express those emotions. It's interesting that she's coming up against this king. Though she is also touching temperance. Some of you, I do feel like this is someone of your past. And I really try not to say that, even though, you know, that's my life. I'm with someone of my past. Um, but I feel like, you know... It's like you're not the person you used to be. Well, they may not be that person that they used to be also. Again, someone may have fallen from grace, but someone may, may have also like have done some deep reflection. I feel like the Ace of Swords is representing truth. Well, we'll come back and clarify that more. But let's keep moving for right now. And let's look right over this marriage card or commitment card. And it's funny because um, in Pisces reading, I literally, which is your neighbor, I literally felt like someone was going to propose. And I definitely feel here like someone's going to express, you know, their true emotions. Four of Pentacles. 
coming over the four of wands. Whoa. And then it just split. The Knight of Cups. Unexpected couple fulfillment over this Ace of Wands. You know what that tells me? That there is love about to enter your life. You know, is it good? Well, I feel like that's what you get, that's what you have to figure out. But I feel like again, once you, you know, in the five of cups, I feel like if I concentrate on like the cups have fallen over, the danger of that is I can kind of get lost in that energy. It can turn into like kind of like woe is me energy. Now, doesn't mean you don't have every reason to feel that way. But yeah, temperance, I feel like, is saying that they're a soulmate, like they're soulmate, a soulmate um, entering. What am I holding? The Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment, coming over the Ace of Wands. Some of you may not even expect this to come in. And it's interesting because I feel like um, it's almost like someone's ringing your telephone. You know, it's like while you're at home, your phone rings or you get a text or something like that where someone may, you know, tell you how they truly feel. Yet, at the same time, I want to say that I feel like you should be able to feel this energy. Well, I feel like it depends because in the Five of Cups, if I'm still focusing on the past, then it means I probably haven't done the work of the hermit. You know what I mean? Like I haven't realized, um, or let me put it a different way. Think about where your own vibration is at, because that's what temperance is doing. Like, you know, making sure, again, that both cups are equally filled, that both of the, are of the same vibration. It doesn't mean you're exactly the same. Don't get me wrong. But, like, if someone comes in and, and they're, you know, speaking words of endearment, I feel like they mean it. I feel that. Um... And sometimes we can get lost on like someone that we wanted to be. And it may be someone completely different. But yet, with all this divine energy here, it feels the right way. You have these two fives right here. So the Hierophant, again, wants you to question your own vibration, your own belief system. And the Five of Cups. But remember, when that person is no longer focusing on what they have lost, these two cups do enter. And literally, it's entering through the Knight of Cups. We have the Six of Wands. Well, that's the energy of victory. There's so much fire down here. Victory over this night. Interesting, you have two knights next to each other also. Versus this knight of wands. It's almost like you feel this energy before it enters. And I feel like, are you going to, you know, do you trust like what I feel is so? Now, be very realistic with yourself at the same time because... I feel like, you know, if like what I really want lies in the past, but that energy hasn't changed, then do I really want that? Am I going to allow myself to be open to, you know, what is new? Who is new? And then I'm thinking about these two kings, you know, and again, if it is someone of the past, then I feel like then there has to have been some type of change. We have the hangman. Interesting. 
So the hangman is, you know, first of all, it's a pause in action. But with purpose, the hangman is seeking wisdom, um, spiritual wisdom, but on this physical plane. You know, and it's reminding me that we did see the wheel and the star before we began. So, you know, something of a destined time. Part of me is like, is it temperance that's asking, like, for this pause? All right. I also want to go below, though. Because I feel like we still have some unanswered questions. We have, interesting, the Five of Pentacles. Over that Four of Wands. Five of Pentacles is very much like a tower. It is something that happens outside of your control. You know, that you didn't really ask for, but nonetheless, it happens. Um, and I often feel in the Five of Pentacles, I don't really have the luxury of just like doing, like just sitting there like in the Five of Cups and just staying in that emotional withdrawal type energy i have to keep moving forward you know what else i feel about the five of pentacles is as i start moving through this energy i do feel like you're moving towards soulmate energy and i don't mean just in love i mean just the right people come in at the right time um you know if you're about to take a left but really your soul wanted to take a right it's like they come in and just bump you so you take that right Look at this, the Ace of Cups. So not only is this Knight of Cups saying I'm bringing you a cup of fulfillment, but it is literally right below it. You have three Aces now. Ace of Swords, Communication, Ace, Ace of Wands, Inspired Action, and now the Ace of Cups, Love. Under that Knight of Cups. The magician, the manifester. You know, the magician is also a teacher. And what the magician teaches us is, you know, whenever we start on a new path, and because you have quite a few fives here, I do feel like it's talking about new opportunities opening up, even if it's with someone, someone of the old. Um, I feel like there must have been some changes. Like someone must have had some deep reflection and um, some real realizations. But if this is talking about someone who's new, more, more reason to look at these fives, right? To consider not getting stuck in that energy because in a way that may be what the hangman is. Am I you know, holding this back from the potential of what wants to come in next. Now, I feel like because temperance is here, what's meant to find you will find you. Um, it's just how will you receive it? What am I holding? The magician. Oh, sorry, I forgot what I was telling you. Um, so the magician, and, and I love that the hermit's also here with the magician because I feel like the magician... It's really the fool's mentor, and the, and the magician teaches the fool that you really possess everything you need to be successful on this next journey. Um, and it is not about carrying the past, you know, those past experiences, past pain. It is really about evolving from that, learning from that. Um, And I also love this with temperance because I feel like this is exactly what life is about. Like when we learn the power of how we can manifest with divine's energy, like, you know, like divine's like, I'm doing my part. Now I just need you to do your part. Let's work hand in hand to bring you the type of life that you really want. 
this is really to me a sense of power it's also coming out or under the six of wands and this knight of wands we have hmm three of cups so three cups talks about joy three cups is about a reason to celebrate some of you have may have, you may have been in like very patient energy but listen it may be because you did need to understand things from a different point of view like from a spiritual you know from a spiritual um what do i want to say in a spiritual way versus just my my limited human mind a reason to celebrate Queen of Wands. Well, um, certainly can be you, Aries, another Aries, Sagittarius, or Leo. But this is what I feel. I feel like this is the Queen of Action. Inspiration. This is someone who follows her desires, what she feels passionate about. And she is a queen. So I feel like it does mean growth. You know, it's like not allowing fear to stop me from moving forward. Again, I don't have to move quickly. Though I do feel like some of this energy is moving quick. And then, well, hello, full. So, a new beginning. So, Aries, this is talking about a new beginning. Um, you know, the only thing I can't really decipher yet, and maybe because it's a little bit of both, maybe for some of you, it is someone of your past. Um, and maybe for some of you, it's someone brand new. And I say that because I feel like some of you have probably been through this very difficult energy, though I feel like temperance has been by your side the whole time. You know, almost like I had to figure out that you know, I do carry this light that I can help create the type of life that I truly want. Sometimes I do need to take bold actions, um, you know, and I do need to reflect, like, have I been true to myself? Have I lowered my vibration to be with others when it really should be the other way around? But that's part of what we're learning. And I love that the fool is right over the magician. Because again, the magician is the is the fool's first mentor along this new beginning. The fool's about taking a leap of faith. Taking a leap of faith. It's not saying a leap from one to ten. I'm just going to take a leap of faith and step into it. See where it takes us. See where it takes me. You know, you have the energy of being victorious. You have the energy of something to celebrate. After a period that felt stagnant, a period where you were seeking wisdom, and I feel like this is telling me that you're finding it. No matter who this might be, I do feel like there is a need to let the past be in the past. And that can mean like, you know, past, just past energy. Um, and again, if someone from the past is making a repeat appearance, then I want to know, like, you know, have they evolved? Like, whatever caused that tower, do I need to fear that just another tower will come? And that's where I think taking it slow comes into play, because I feel like people will always reveal to you who they are. The problem is sometimes um, we don't give them enough time. And I mean that in both ways, like if someone or or let's just put it this way, you know, I feel like with you being watched over, if this was a negative thing, I feel like red flags would come out like you would know very quickly. And it does kind of feel guided to me. You know, it's interesting that the page of swords is coming over the ace of swords and that can talk about like. You know, someone who really had to learn how to communicate and mirroring that King of Swords where 
you know, they have a tendency to, and I know it again, because I am an earth sign to like, um, not being completely open with like feelings or what have you, you know, they're more in, you know, in showing, like, I'll show you how I love you versus maybe giving you those terms and an endearment. But I feel like that's temporary. Like once I feel like once a king or queen let of pentacles let you in, then they let you in completely. Hmm. Interesting reading. I want to come back and I want to look at the kings. These two kings of pentacles, see if they're the same person. You know, we have two different earth signs up here. Six of Pentacles. That fine art of give and take. You know, you know, one king, or let's just say maybe it was even the younger side of this person, could have been in the energy of like a taker, you know. And I had to learn that fine art of give and take. To me, the Six of Pentacles also speaks about compassion. You know, someone who is empathetic. Someone who, um, and this can come with time, where, you know, they do care about their fellow man. Where they can easily give, but sometimes don't know how to receive. Now, I may be talking to you with that. This could be someone who comes in and says those exact words. Like, I realize that, you know, I don't know that they would say, like, I was the taker and you and you were the giver. But at least re the realization of that energy, like, you know, maybe I didn't I didn't do my part the way that I should have. You know, this hangman coming right under the kings, it's almost like it is the king who's been in this state of reflection. Though I feel like you have also. Okay. I'm not done with that yet. Whoa. Okay. We have a card that went off the table. Couple cards. Okay. We have the three of wands and then temperance. So, okay, let's talk about this because you know where I was feeling earlier where sometimes it's better to take something step by step. Well, that's what the three of wands means. You know, the three of wands, first of all, it's a grateful energy. Like I'm grateful for my present day moment. Um, for the things I have in my life right now, I'm not projecting myself out into the future. Why? Because I trust that, you know, in the three of wands, I trust that my ships will come in in their due time and temperance right next to that. Almost like you can trust that. The moon again. And then the Two of Swords. Two of Swords talks about a blindfold. Am I wearing a blindfold? Is there something I don't want to face? You know, Two of Swords to me, it is blocking opportunity. But maybe that's just what I feel like I need to do at that moment. But at the same time with Temperance here, you know, and the Moon is like, you know, with a blindfold, you I feel like in a way you won't be able to move this forward. You know, it's almost like the fear-based mind will take over. But I feel like temperance is helping you with that. It's almost like she's saying, just enjoy this for what it is. Like enjoy it in the present moment. 
You know, and what we got to remember, especially in relationships, that it is the present day moment that's really determining what our future is going to look like. You know, it's how we treat each other right now. It's what we say to each other right now. You know, it's whether we're going to enjoy the energy or we're going to let fear take over. Will that make a difference? Yes, of course. How could it not? Some, I feel like, you know, the fear is just the uncertainty. You know, it's almost like, well, listen, I've given my heart before. And what good did that do? I, you know, I got this tower. And I do feel like this tower was not something you asked for because I feel like the Five of Pentacles is representing that. But I don't feel like it's stopping anything. Very interesting. Um, I feel like what I want to do... Because I feel like we're going a little back and forth here. Um, but And in the same breath, I feel like we're going back and forth because it's going to mean different things to different people. You know, if this is someone of the past, then I don't want to have a blindfold on if, if I'm interested in moving forward. Because how can I allow someone to, re you know, like, if... Again, I want to allow someone to reveal who they are. If someone came in and said, you know, I realize now that, you know, you were the one who really kept this relationship together as I was taking, you know, as I thought about myself. And if I really want to be able to trust those words, that's why the blindfold needs to be off. And temperance keeps coming around. You know, talking about divine timing um, and is the controller of the soulmates. You know, saying that this is a reason to truly celebrate. The fool is saying, take a leap of faith. But these fives do feel like they're adding in a little confusion. The Knight of Cups is coming in, I feel like, no matter what. And again, that's unexpected couple fulfillment coming over that ace of wands. Some of you, I feel like you're going to feel it. You know, it's like your heart chakra is being activated. And I do feel, you know, there could have been one time because we have justice here mirroring the marriage card, right? And the ten of cups under the tower was underneath that. Six of cups. A judgment. Um, but anyway, so this could talk, certainly talk about a previous commitment that has been broken. And again, it could have been against you, like your wishes, so to speak. And, and that's why, that's why I want to be very careful because, you know, if this, if this is someone who's making a repeat appearance, then boy, I want to make sure that their vibration um, has lifted. But I also got to make sure that my vibration has also, right? Because I want you to think about also the law of attraction. Like if what I truly want is love in my life, then I've got to be able to give love. The universe will meet you right where you're at. Okay, I feel like I want to pick these up, though. And um, I want to get more clarity. We're going to leave the main spread out. What I'm going to do... Oh, I'm like, I reach it. Oh. Look at that temperance again. My dear Aries, you are under the influence of temperance right now. Divine energy. All right, I'm going to give these a shuffle, and we're just going to use them to go over the reading real quick. And again, it's just to help to give us a little bit more clarity 
even though it could literally be two different, you know, I mean, we have a lot of people who watch the reading, so it's going to be different for different people, right? I am going to look for synchronicities. Let's go ahead and give them a cut. The chariot. Someone doesn't want to move forward with you. This is movement. And you know, the chariot really speaks about unlimited potential. But how does the chariot move? It moves by your intentions. Your intentions determine the potential that the chariot holds. It is a card of cancer, by the way. I feel like it's only fair that I say that. We have the Eight of Cups now, where the Five of Cups once sat. So this is emotional clarity within your emotional house. This is truly where, you know, you have looked within that emotional house. You've, you've looked at the cups that knocked, have been knocked over, but you're no longer allowing them to affect you. This person's leaving the Eight of Cups. That means they're heading to the Nine of Cups. That means inner harmony. It's also about a fulfillment of a wish. So I feel like having emotional clarity and it is an eight. So it's about a new beginning coming over the moon. You know, I think of Pisces and the, or, and even cancer, you know, um, and like, you know, their emotional house is what's really strong within them. And then we have the three of swords over that four of cups. That makes sense. Right? That makes sense. You know, it just tells us what we already know. Um, that somewhere along the line, you did get your heart broken. But I do feel like, you know, this heartbreak is what sent you into that dark night of the soul. But I do feel like because the hermit is now shining that beacon of light outwardly, I've had true reflection over this. And now it's just about using my spiritual discernment as this new cup comes in. You know, I feel like we've all gone through a heartache. Okay, they wanted to come out one big lump. We have the Nine of Swords. Nine of Swords. A lot of worry. You know, coming over the King of Pentacles, um, where they can definitely overthink. But Nine of Swords really speaks about unnecessary worry. And it's next to that three. You know, I feel like it's literally just saying, like, I'm worried that I'm going to get my heart broken again. But again, the message is unnecessary worry. We have the page of cups. Over the marriage card, we have, interesting, the five of wands over the ace of wands. So let's talk about this for a second. Another five. five. This five, five of wands, speaks about a lot of drama. This is the energy. And this is why I do feel like for some of you, this is not someone of your past. Or at least, you know, someone that you've been in a love relationship with. Um, because this, this is a lot of drama in the five of wands. This is a lot of ego energy. And, um, you know, the Eight of Cups, this person walking away from that energy, I feel like it's really the only thing you can do. Because in this energy, I feel like no one is going to back down. No one's going to, like, admit that they're wrong. Um, and if, if that's what I'm seeking, I'm probably not going to find it 
in wow, I'm in that energy. So the best thing I can do is not allow myself to get pulled into that energy. The hangman. Hello, Ten of Cups. Interesting, Ten of Cups is now literally over justice. And then, hello, Six of Wands. <clears throat> okay. You know, let me tell you one more thing about justice. Because it's not always about cutting ties. Um, I feel like a lot of times when justice shows up in a reading, it's talking about making you whole again. You know what I mean? What's fair and just in your world. We see the Ten of Cups under the tower, but now we have the Ten of Cups again, but with the energy of victory over it. The hangman before that, it just feels to me like, like each one of these soulmates needed the time to reflect upon their own lives, their own, you know, their own pain, their own experiences, you know, um, some... Like, you know, where to, where I went wrong, who I hurt, others, you're the one who's been hurt, and the effect that it's still playing in your in your life today. Because again, that Nine of Swords is saying you don't need to worry. And the hangman, it, it literally feels like someone is like putting a block on this cup that wants to come in through the four of cups. But yet, again, that hangman is seeking wisdom. And then it moves right into that ten of cups. And that is the house of love. And it is mirroring that four of cups. I'm sorry, the four of wands, the marriage card. Page of cups underneath that or over it. Well, I can't talk today. You know, to me, that feels like the healing of the inner child. So it feels to me like it's this king. Well, let's look at that. I'm going to look at that king again. Um, and I definitely feel like some of you have, you know, you just cut the ties to, like, people who are drama-filled. People who are, you know, filled with problems. Like, I, I just don't want that in my life anymore. Um, and again, you know, that three of swords, yes, you had your heart broken. But temperance is like, but you can overcome that, my dear. We have the eight of pentacles. We have that page of swords again, who was over that ace of swords. So I do feel like it may be this king who may be communicating, hello, Ace of Cups. Hello, Ace of Cups. So now we've seen every Ace. This is love. Now it's directly attached to the page, who was attached to that Ace of Swords. Look what it's met with, the Eight of Swords. Now the good news, is this come down from the Nine of Swords to the Eight of Swords? The Eight of Swords is a self-created prison. <clears throat> These are the walls that I have built up to protect myself from because I don't want to get my heart broken again. Makes sense, right? But in the same breath, and listen, I feel like you take your time. This is this not this the readings aren't about me telling you what to do. The readings are just to show you like the potential of what can be. But these, and like the Nine of Swords and the Eight of Swords, you know, the Hangman, that type of energy, um, can it slow down what's really meant for you anyways? Yes. It is a self-created prison. And the only one who can uncreate it is you. Not even this Ace of Cups can uncreate it. You know... Why do I create it? Because in a way, to be honest, you're not trusting your intuition. You know, again, that energy of like people re will reveal to you who they are, 
but you need to be, you know, you need to have your eyes wide open. You need to have your spiritual ears on. You need to trust your intuition. You don't need to build these walls, right? This person has a blindfold on. She's like loosely bound her hands. You know, it's a facade. It's a facade. But nobody can break you free but you. And I feel like the Eight of Pentacles showing up is answering a question for you. Because, of course, if I've had my heart broken before and here comes this Ace of Cups, here comes this passion, it's going to be undeniable. Doesn't mean I'm going to say yes. Um, but I feel like the Eight of Pentacles answers a question like, can I be successful? Well, the Eight of Pentacles tells you wherever you put your focus, you know, whatever you put your focus on is what you're going to grow. So if two people are willing to really focus upon, you know, this Ace of Cups, then do I think it's going to grow? I do think it's going to grow and grow and grow. You know, it's becoming very clear to me. And I feel like this not, this king may have a little fear of reaching out. Now, that would make sense if you already know this person, right? Because maybe this king is like, oh, I know that I broke this person's heart. Um, but yet, I'm still in love. What can I do? I'm still in love. But I feel like it's going to be met with these these walls that I won't be able to break, I won't be able to break through. Um, and again, I'm not trying to talk you into anything. I just want you to understand what the energy is. I feel like at one time it's saying there was just a lot of drama and it really left me no choice but to walk away from it. Hmm. You know, the Page of Cups over this Four of Wands, again, the commitment, true commitment, by the way, true commitment. My favorite love card, because I feel like everyone in this energy, they they want to be together. They couldn't imagine not being together. And I know sometimes things don't work out, but it doesn't mean that sometimes, you know, people can't come back together. And um, especially if they've like had true realizations of how things and why things went wrong. And I feel like for some of you, again, this may be speaking about someone brand new, but still the Eight of Swords exist here. So these walls are still up. Though the chariot's saying this really, this really is about unlimited potential. I don't think temperance would have came out so many times if this wasn't like divinely guided. But again, it's coming into your human life. What do I do? What do I do? So the Page of Cups, you know, number one, I feel like it's learning to, to love yourself again. It's learning, you know, because I feel like where do we take this type of pain right in our inner child you know where we start to think oh my gosh it's me i'm unlovable when that's not the case right so i have to figure that out you know because literally it's next to the five of wands where just a lot of drama filled energy and i feel like i had no choice but to leave that even if it broke my heart. And I feel like the page of cups is once you start to like, you know, come back to yourself again, then I feel like it's a very playful, open type of energy. But I, I just want to look right at that. And then we'll let it be. Well, hello, star. So it is about a dream. A wish. And it's about manifesting it. You know, the star is also holding those two cups. Temperance is holding those two cups. The energy of the five of cups that we saw earlier, when I no longer focus on, 
you know, my focus isn't on all that I've lost. And I start thinking about the potential of what is yet to be, all the potential of what can be. This feels like a dream being answered, a wish being answered. And then look at that. There's that inner harmony that we've been looking for. That changes everything. Because once I have inner harmony instead of this fear-based energy, this means I trust my own energy. This means that, first of all, I feel like in the Nine of Cups, I'm okay being by myself. But it doesn't mean that I'm not also open to love. It just means I haven't shut my heart down. I have a feeling for a while you have, but this is now, again, you find that inner harmony. It's almost like you've, you've come through that dark night of the soul. And literally the nine of cups means first inner harmony and then a fulfillment of a wish sitting right next to the wish card. Right over the four of wands, exactly what I'm looking at. So I'm not going to overread this. Because I feel like it's going to be a little bit, you know, I feel like it's, it's, it's two different things, but it's for two different sets of people. Strength card. You know, that reminds me of what Mother Mary is, is saying, be strong. This is about one being bold enough to look within themselves. You know, understanding that we all carry the light and the shadow, that we are both masculine and feminine, that there are energies that we're tempted to when we're a lower vibrational energy, but we also have learned that when we raise our own vibration, well then, as the law of attraction states, that's what's going to come back to me. And if anything of a lower vibrational is trying to come in, I feel like pay attention because I feel like the, the, the signs will be sent. The red flags will be clear. And I know this is going to be a long reading, but I feel like I just want to take another Mother Mary card. Something is telling me to take one more. So I'm going to do it. And it's interesting because I did that for another reading, and I wonder now if it was Libra's reading. Okay, well, well, that's a lot, but we're going to take them. We have prayer. Instead of worrying, well, that makes sense because we have the Nine of Swords. Instead of worrying, I pray about this situation to bring about real solutions. Mother, mother, some of you, it may be your mother that you pray to. <clears throat> you know, when I say pray to, let's just say speak to. You know, you, have, you may have a mother in passing. Um, I open my heart to my mother's humanness and her divinity. Enthusiasm. Well, that's the three of cups. Enthusiasm. Whatever I am most passionate about is the direction I flow. And then last but not least, faith. A beautiful granddaughter's name, faith. I have faith in God to heal this situation. I have faith in God to heal this situation. And maybe that's exactly what's happening. You know, the healing of oneself first. And if this is like, again, an existing, something that is, has existed, then faith that it can be healed. But I feel like first it has to start with you, especially if this is something new. Because this Ace of Cups coming up against this Eight of Cups, or this Eight of Swords, I got to let my walls down. I got to just put my foot in the water. Right? We saw the fool. I got to just take that leap of faith. If this is what I want. But if it's not what I want, that is your choice. Because some of you might be like, I'm more than happy in my life right now. 
But yet, ask yourself, because if it presents itself through what feels like divine energy, what would stop you? So just ask yourself that with no judgment. All right, Aries, I think I'm going to let that be. I feel like this was kind of like a back and forth type of reading, but I feel like it's because it's different situations for different people. And I feel like you'll find your way in this reading. You'll know, you know, if it's talking about you or not. Um, and again, if anyone's coming back from the past and, um, you know, they haven't, ev if you evolved, but they haven't, then you're going to know that. And that's why you want to pay attention to your intuition. It's when we don't pay attention to our intuition, everything becomes cloudy. You know, like, ah, I don't know if I can trust. Well, your intuition is trying to tell you that. But I don't feel like, honestly, I don't feel like this is layer of vibration coming back to you. I really feel like this is like good karma coming your way. But I'm going to leave that to you. I can't wait to read your comments. Wow. Um, you know, as I do these readings, I'm understanding more and more why I'm doing opposite signs. And I don't know, I may continue in the future, but cannot wait to read your comments about this one. Um, I love you guys. I thank you. And I'm going to let that be because I don't want to make it too, too long. Um, let me know, though. Let me know how you relate to it. You know, if you've been in the Eight of Swords and now, you know, you're in that Nine of Cups, definitely share your experiences if you wish. You don't have to. Um, but I do feel like like other people look at it, look at comments and they're like, oh, OK, well, they made it. They were able to overcome it. So maybe I can, too. I feel like ultimately we all become healers if we allow ourselves to be. All right. Love you guys. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.